He said, I remember one day standing in the hallway looking at my mom as she was on the phone with her best friend. And her friend was trying to talk her into giving me a puppy. And finally, she gave in. He said, he's going to lose his hearing. Give him a puppy. So she went to a pound. She found a, a puppy, brought it home. He said, I loved that puppy so much that I gave him my bunny blanket to sleep on. It was my, my joy for five days. And then the puppy died. They didn't know that they brought home a sick puppy. And he said, five days later, my mom has someone take the puppy out of the house. And then in front of me, because the puppy was lying on it, she burned my bunny blanket. And he looked at us and said, I guess I'm just a little kid still looking for love. Welcome, welcome to the Men of Impact podcast with your boy, LAC. I'm happy you're here with me. I know a lot of you guys know who Hugh Hefner is. Playboy, owner of the Playboy mansion, adult industry philanthropist. He did a lot of things, right? So we all know who Hugh Hefner is. He was the face of the Playboy magazine, the Playboy mansion, and he did a lot of things in the adult industry. But I was listening to this interview and this testimony by this lady whose name was Karen, who actually did an interview on Hugh Hefner. I'm talking about she had the opportunity to do an interview on Hugh Hefner to find out why he ended up the way he ended up. And as I was listening to this interview, I thought, you know what, I would love to share with you guys so you guys can listen along with me because it really encouraged me. And maybe we can learn something and we just go ahead and react to it. So without further ado, let's get into the video and make sure you stick around because I got something to tell you at the end. Call Headliners and Legends with Matt Lauer. It was a celebrity profile show and they were producing one hour specials on different celebrities. And the executive producer turned to me and a gentleman next to me I had just met named Rick and said, Karen and Rick, I'm going to put you together and your first assignment is Hugh Hefner. I was horrified. He started the Playboy magazine, Playboy Channel, Playboy Mansion. He objectified women. There is nobody that you could give me that I am more disinterested in. And I told my husband, I said, I said, pal, I am so bummed. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do Hugh Hefner. And he said, somebody's going to do it. And if you don't do it, somebody else will. So why don't you do it differently? So I thought, OK, I'm going to start praying about how to do this differently. So the next day, I went back to the office, and I walked in, and I said, Rick, I have to be honest with you. I do not want to do Hugh Hefner. And he said, neither do I. And I said, you don't, you're a guy. Why don't you want to do Hugh Hefner? And he said, I just don't want to. And last night, I called my pastor. You what? What did he say? He said to me, Rick, if you don't do it, somebody else will. So you better do it and do it differently. And he said, I kind of got excited about that. But then I had to come and tell you today. And I said, my husband said the exact same thing. We better start praying and figuring out how to do this story. And we thought of an idea suddenly. We thought, you know, let's not tell how he became famous or what he's accomplished. Let's find out why he became who he is. We all got in a car together. We drove to the mansion. We came in, we set up. He comes in with an entourage. There were bunnies, there were PR people, there were bodyguards, and he was lovely. He was in the smoking jacket that he wore. He must have had a hundred of them in it. So we sat down and Rick started asking the questions. He said, Hef, that's what he wanted us to call him. He said, Hef, what was your life like growing up? And he looked at us and he said, we believed in God, but it wasn't a very loving home. He said, my parents never told my brother or me that they loved us. And my mother had a phobia of germs and she never hugged us or kissed us. I never had contact. And they never knew how to show their love. They only did one thing once for wow. me that I remember. They gave me a gift that I loved so much because it was the only thing that reminded me that my parents loved me. He said it was a blanket, and I called it my bunny blanket because it had little bunny rabbits around the outside of the blanket. And he said, I love that blanket. I slept with it. I carried it around during the day. Wow. And he said, that meant so much to me. The other thing I wanted, I wanted a puppy. And my mother said, no, I don't want germs in the house. Until, he said, I was seven or eight years old, and I got a tumor in my ear, and we had to have, I had to have surgery. And he said, the doctor told my mother I could lose my hearing. He said, I remember one day standing in the hallway looking at my mom as she was on the phone with her best friend. 
and her friend was trying to talk her into giving me a puppy. And finally, she gave in. He said, he's going to lose his hearing. Give him a puppy. So she went to a pound. She found a, a puppy, brought it home. He said, I loved that puppy so much that I gave him my bunny blanket to sleep on. It was my, my joy for five days. And then the puppy died. They didn't know that they brought home a sick puppy. So sad. He said, five days later, my mom has someone take the puppy out of the house. And then in front of me, because the puppy was lying on it, she burned my bunny blanket. And he looked at us and said, I guess I'm just a little kid still looking for love. The interview went on for him telling how he's continued through his life to find the real love. He says, my friends and I get together every Friday night in the mansion and we watch old romantic movies because I'm trying to find the story that's true. And he said, I've tried to find love through marriages, through friendships, even my children. I've never found the true love that I want. And he said, I listen to love songs because I'm trying to find the lyrics to the love songs that are true. At the end of the interview, it was silence in the room. And Hef came straight to Rick and me and he said, that was my favorite interview. I have never had people ask me questions like that. I never get to talk about my childhood. I thought, I can't hate this man ever. I can feel sorry for him. I can see his broken heart. I can see why he's made his choices, but not because he's a bad person. It's because he's a broken person. So after the interview, uh, the week later, I wrote him a note and I said, Heath, thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to get to know you and to interview you. I said, you have accomplished everything that man has to offer, but I think there's one thing you haven't accomplished. You know a living God, but I don't think you've ever experienced a loving God. And I hope that that can be the last thing you accomplish. And so I've put in this letter a book that I, that I think might help in the journey. Put it in a package and I sent it to him. And I thought, that's all I can do. Two weeks later, I get a letter back from him. Hi, Karen. Thank you for my favorite interview. And he said, thank you for the book. I look forward to reading it. I do have a faith, but a lot of people don't understand it. And so I just started praying for him. Just started praying. Three months later was Christmas. I got him a Bible, I stamped his name on the front, I wrote Merry Christmas and thanks, and I sent it to him. I get a letter back, thanked me for the Bible. Then three months after that, he was speaking at the Television Academy, and I wanted to go see him again, because I had continued to pray for him. So I brought a friend of mine, we went backstage, and I said, I'm so glad to see you, and he, and he turned to my friend, he goes, she did my favorite interview. And my friend said, it's so good to meet you, I loved what you had to say. She said, but I think there's one thing you haven't experienced. And he said, what? And she said, Grace. And he looked at her and said, my mother's name was Grace. And there was silence again. And then people came up and we had to say goodbye and I hugged him and that was the last time I talked to him. He grew up in a home where he had no love. As a child, he was searching for it. He found something that he, that he loved, his blanket. And then that was taken away from him. He became an adolescent, and that desire that was not fulfilled became a sexual desire. Then he hung on to that and got older, and it became a business, and he started making money from it, and he started being fulfilled with material things. Then he got older, and it became an empire, and he ended up having everything that man has to offer. And yet, he was never happy. He was never satisfied. He lived an empty life searching for the truth. And that reminds me of the devil comes to steal from us and to kill and to destroy us and takes things from us and makes us think that we can fill up with material items and that we can get joy from more money, a bigger house, more power, and it will ultimately continue to make us feel empty. And yet Jesus offers himself to say, I'm the only way you can be completely fulfilled. It's not from material things, it's not from money, it's not from power, it's not from sex, it's not from all those things that we try to fill our lives up with. It's just believing in a loving God who wants the best for you. That experience not only told me the power of prayer, but also told me we can't judge anybody. We have to find out their story. We have to find out why somebody does what they do. If someone's mean to us, I tell people, have an unoffendable heart and find out why that person did that, not what they did or not how they did it. 
and you're going to have a whole different perspective then. I am lost for words, but I am so grateful. As she was speaking, I could just feel the presence of God. I don't know if you felt the same thing, but what a powerful, powerful testimony. Hugh Hefner is no longer around. You know, he's gone now. And I don't know where he is. I don't know where he might be. I don't know how his life was at the end. Um, and if he ever reconciled with God or ever got into a, a moment or a place where he was just, you know, he, he actually searched the, for the truth. It's so sad to see that he was seeking and searching for the true love and nothing else, as you can see, could fill him up. Similar to Solomon, the Bible made it clear that at the end of his life, his heart was far from God because he had everything man could want, but he drifted away from God. Material things, they can't fulfill us, they can't sustain us, they can't satisfy us. They'll give you temporary pleasures, temporary joy, temporary happiness, but at the end, it's fleeting. Now, you can only find that joy, that everlasting peace, that everlasting fulfillment in Christ Jesus. And we can see it with the modern day Hugh Hefner, someone who got everything, whether it's women that you wanted, the most beautiful women, money, clothes, notoriety, fame. He had everything. But yet he it, deep down inside, he was a broken little boy that never got the feeling of love. And so I want to encourage you. I don't know your story. And maybe you're out here seeking women and searching for women and trying to fill yourself with sex, money, fame, whatever. But if there's something inside that you're trying to fill with outside things, you will never fill it up because it will be bigger and bigger. Every time you get something, you think, ah, this is it. You'll find out it's not. But let me encourage you that there is someone by the name of Jesus who came who lived a life that was perfect without sin, and he laid his life, gave his life so that he, he can take the sins of the world, and he has come to give you life and life more abundantly, and he is the only one that can fill that void. And so if you don't know Jesus and you're out here searching, get to know Jesus. Don't wait till it's too late, and don't wait till you're on your deathbed to realize, my gosh, I missed out on such an opportunity. This is the time to get to know Jesus. And if you want to get to know Jesus, comment below. I want to get to know Jesus. And let's start there. Thank you guys for watching. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. It's your boy.